I believe in free speech as much as you. Hate speech on the platform is up. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but that's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. What, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes but beyond well, the law. It's and what I'm saying is, are you suggesting we should shut down the internet? I see how you feel now. For sure. What censorship is so bad you can taste it? What goes wrong in this interview? Why do both Lemon and Musk end up being frustrated? To answer these questions, this video looks at how Lemon phrases his questions and how he deals with Musk's answers. Welcome to the channel where we look at what influential people say, what they really say. Feel free to like and subscribe for more videos. Hang on, because things are about to get spicy. Time to get the party started. Musk and Lemon talk about content moderation, so-called, and the extreme differences between their opinions are made clear right from the get-go. What's also made clear is that Lemon treats this interview as a political interview, with a more or less hostile interview style. In political interviews, the interviewer's aim is not just to obtain and impart information, but more importantly, to ask the politician to account for his words and actions. Interviewers' questions often and unavoidably embody assumptions that accept or reject interviewees' stated positions. The interviewer uses prefaces, often long prefaces, to problematize the interviewee's subsequent answer and cast doubt on the interviewee's credibility. One of the ways the interviewer does this is by taking certain, most often negative information, for granted. This is called presuppositions. Do you think if there, if, if you moderated yourself more if there was better content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great, great replacement theory as it relates I to I don't Democrats. have to answer these questions. The great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that I don't have to answer questions from reporters? Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. Better content moderation. With these words, Lemon presupposes that the content moderation isn't good enough. He also presupposes that reporters, plural, are asking Musk about this conspiracy theory and shows his assertiveness by not letting Musk cut in the first time around. Great replacement theory as it relates to I don't to have to answer this question. Great replacement theory as it relates to... Thus, we see that it's the presuppositions that Musk is reacting to. In this context, the theory that Lemon mentions is a so-called synecdoche, a small part of an alleged problem that's used to represent the whole. An objection to the usage of synecdoches is that it's always possible to mention an area of something that's less optimal or even damaging. For example, if the conversation were about TikTok, an objection could be that this platform could encourage young people to do hazardous stunts. But does that mean that TikTok is bad as a platform? Some would say yes, but some would say no, and that's the point. People don't agree about what constitutes harmful content. Thus, Lemon's example isn't necessarily as clear and objectively true as he tries to make it seem with this counter question. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that possibly, I could care less. Lemon's the one criticizing Musk for this, but his counter question makes it sound like the criticism is inevitable and as if Musk doesn't want to be criticized. One of the things that distinguishes Musk from many other CEOs is his directness. He doesn't spend much time trying to mitigate his opinions with vague modifiers or buzzwords. And next, his directness becomes the focal point of Lemon's reaction. It, you, don't, you don't care? No, I don't Why care. not? I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. They're he, terrible judges of character. Musk says media and there, but considering that Lemon's the one who mentioned this criticism, Musk's counter-criticism is actually aimed at Lemon. Oftentimes, it's hard to judge what a person's facial expression means, but Lemon obviously needs a second to process this, maybe because he knows what Musk is implying. They're he, terrible judges of character. Even someone who has one of the biggest social media and biggest information platforms in the world, you don't think, you don't care, you don't think that there's, you have any x.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating the platform? This is a fork, presenting the interviewee with two alternatives that are both undesirable. If Musk says no, he'll sound irresponsible. And if he says yes, he agrees with Lemon that some people's opinions and theories should be moderated, which could be a euphemism for censored. Once again, it's the presuppositions that lay the foundation for this fork.
Lemons presupposing what the truth is, that the truth is always clearly defined and easy to see. So next, unsurprisingly, Musk attacks Lemons' presupposition once again. Uh, you're conflating the truth with the, with the media, and I think the media is uh, not truthful. Well, not with just the, the media, I mean just the truth in general. Whose truth are we talking about? Lemon's question depends on the nature of the given topic. Is it an undeniable fact that there can only be one opinion about? Or is it, as is most often the case, a topic that there are different opinions about? Can he really go from the synecdoche to talking about the truth in general? But at least Lemon got to shift focus so that they aren't discussing media, which he is a part of, or used to be a part of. I, I, I care about the truth very much. That's why we have, for example, community, community notes on the, the X system. In order for, for a community note to surface, uh, people who have historically disagreed must agree in order for a community note to surface. And all of the code for community notes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. However, is that the kind of truth that Lemon wants? I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that, you, do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? Lemon's vowel stresses and three different verbs foreshadow this disagreement. I have, you are right, do think. This is where Lemon bends the rules of political interviewing, as it's made a little too clear what his personal opinions are. Well, I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. How much would he consider helpful, though? What if people like Lemon were in charge of Musk's platform? What if the topic is gender, what constitutes a man and a woman, for example? Well, I mean, I think when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them. I'm just trying to start by getting to the truth, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable with that language of, like, g getting to the truth. It, it sounds actually deeply transphobic to me. Um, and, if you, and, and if you keep probing, we're going to stop the interview. You keep invoking the word truth, which is condescending and rude. It's easy to see how moderation can turn into self-serving censorship, silencing certain inconvenient opinions. Hate speech on the platform? That's what the hate speech are you address. talking about? This is yet another presupposition on Lemon's part, as if everybody agrees what constitutes hate speech. This is covert argumentation where the speaker doesn't define his or her assumptions. I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law, and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Do you, you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law. This is lexical reuse, a fancy term for repetition. Through this practice, interviewees can propose that they are attending to the question in detail and are thus properly responsive to the issues that it raises. Musk reuses Lemon's word, responsibility, to shift focus from hate speech to the law and his previous word, transparency and its implications. As we see next, Musk can use the presuppositions in Lemon's questions against him through this repetition. However, that doesn't stop Lemon from presupposing what hate speech is. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. And we don't want to put our thumb on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen it says it, go, it went down. And that's why the research shows argument isn't optimal. It's almost always possible to find a study that supports your opinion. This doesn't mean that all studies are equally good or bad. It means that there's no time in an interview to consider all the independent variables like who did the study, who financed the study, and the most important one, how did the researchers define hate speech? The, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech on the platform is up. If only it were this simple to draw conclusions from a study. First of all, just because certain users think something is hateful content, it doesn't mean that it is. It would have to be made clear what hate is first. Secondly, how did they classify the tweets? Were some or most of them poor attempts at humor, or were they inflammatory? In other words, did the tweets break any laws? This is the other aspect of a fork. 
Previously, we saw that Lemon used a fork to present Musk with two equally undesirable alternatives, and now he's presenting alleged statistics to show that hate speech hasn't gone down like Musk says. In the following, Musk uses one of the many independent variables to his advantage. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility, or what did, did like one person see it? Uh, and if you look at the number of views, of how, 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 many, how many times was his content viewed on our platform, it is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and Don, you can, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. This is split hunting, another technique from political interviewing. Split hunting is about showing that the interviewee allegedly contradicts himself and his parties, or in this case, companies' values. Here, Lemon uses split hunting to get the last word or try to at least, because pointing to a study that hasn't been properly specified isn't a successful attempt at split hunting. Lemon's convenient conclusion is much too oversimplified. Next, it's time for another synecdoche. Surely, if this is allowed on Musk's platform, it must mean that Musk is irresponsible, right? That's the reaction Lemon is going for. But this, 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 this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you... Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but... They're not illegal, but... This utterance reveals that the type of moderation that Lemon wants is dependent on subjective interpretation, irrespective of what's legal or illegal. He's about to give a quite contrived ground for his claim that these tweets shouldn't be up. Let's watch. They're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so this is an irresponsible usage of synecdoches. The people Lemon mentions weren't motivated by these exact tweets. He can't point to a causal connection between these tweets and the crimes. Social media are many things. Many things could potentially radicalize someone. Who's the arbiter of what content will affect whom? Furthermore, what's worse, that people express themselves within the boundaries of the law, or that they aren't allowed to express themselves at all? Which of these alternatives leads or could lead to most harm? Lemon speaks as if he knows, but does he? The causality that Lemon sees or pretends to see between seeing something on social media and being encouraged to go out and do something illegal is right out of the handbook of the largely outdated effects research, which considers the recipient to be more or less passive. It's concerned with the question, what does the media text do to the recipient? The newer and more nuanced reception research, on the other hand, is concerned with the question, what does the recipient do with the media text? According to this view, the recipient is active and isn't simply, or necessarily, programmed what to think and feel. And next, Musk turns the tables. Maybe Lemon's calm demeanor and good intentions haven't fooled him. You love censorship, is what you're saying. No, I don't love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in... Censorship is a, it's a... Moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or not, you know... Look, if something's illegal, we're going to take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being censors. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech? Lemon visibly doesn't know how to counter Musk's statement, now that Musk has turned the tables and gives short and concise definitions, so he resorts to effective prosody, a way of manipulating his intonation to convey emotion, in this case to play on people's indignation, indignation that Musk thinks that moderating hate speech is putting his thumb on the scale. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. However, again, he's presupposing what hate speech is, which is exactly why Musk appealed to the law in the first place. The law in any given zeitgeist determines what it is. And it continues. I mean, you don't put out child. That's not, it's illegal. That some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. No, I literally, Don, you know, I literally said, if, if something is legal, Okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay. But if it is not legal, the, 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 the laws in this country are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. 
uh, if those laws are put in place uh, by, the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, and I agree. We adhere agree. to the laws of, of, okay. of others. If you go beyond the law, you're actually going beyond the will of the people. Lemon introduces a particular heinous type of crime, disregarding what Musk just finished saying, that content that's illegal is banned. In conclusion then, Lemon is much too focused on split hunting and forks to see that the techniques aren't working in his favor, to say the least. At one point, Lemon's intonation indicates that he concedes that Musk is being reasonable, as he is eager to get Musk to stop talking. By the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, and I agree. agree. To the laws of, of, okay. of others. After all, he didn't ask for this interview to get a lecture. As an interviewer, he's the authority, right? The interviewee shouldn't remind him of the basics of democracy. Okay, agreed. Uh, with the law. But if you are doing something that promotes hate and violence and ultimately leads to killing, you don't feel there's you have any responsibility not to do that? Which again hinges on his own effects research inspired presupposition that it's clearly defined what content will lead to hate and things that are worse, and that the synecdoches he's presented are enough to make Musk look irresponsible. Thus, he makes it known that this irresponsibility discourse is the agenda behind his questions, irrespective of what Musk says. That's why it's bad to have ready-made conclusions before an interview. It stops you from engaging in the conversation, being present in the moment, and actually listen to what the other person says. In the end, it ends up hurting you because your agenda is blatantly obvious to everyone. But that would never, that would never be in mainstream media. These types of images, that type of language, those things would never be, we'd never, in main, when I was in mainstream media, we'd never promote things that um, would, would be anti-Semitic. We would never we promote things that, that would. Anti-Semitic either. Did you, did, you, did you not see those? You said promote. You said if content is on the platform, that doesn't mean we promote it. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform for mainstream media at all. The verb promote is another sneaky presupposition. How does Lemon know which content will lead to which outcome? Judging him by his own standard, how does he know that mainstream media hasn't promoted anything bad, hasn't caused someone to go out and do something? Just because he adds at all for dramatic effect, it doesn't justify his presupposition. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform for mainstream media at all. Reception research suggests that the same media content can have completely different effects on people. That's because people use media content for different purposes. For example, some people listen to Beethoven to concentrate on their work. Other people listen to Beethoven to imagine living in a different time. The same song can make one person feel sad and another person feel happy. This is called mood management theory. Personally, I've laughed at things I shouldn't have laughed at, but that doesn't mean I've supported these things. I've even laughed at jokes about my gender and ethnicity. Next, notice how get rid of is the first alternative Lemon mentions, which speaks volumes about what he thinks should happen to content he's offended by, or pretends to be offended by. Does it bother you? How do you feel about that when you see it? I obviously disagree with that. I think it's not, it's not good at all. It's terrible. But you don't want to get rid of it on the platform, or at least moderate it. The laws, the, you're, you're, what, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's, and what I'm saying is, uh, I'm saying is, uh, I... Reaction translation. Why isn't Musk willingly walking into the rhetorical traps I've set for him? In the following, Lemon makes a quite desperate attempt at split hunting. After all, he's the authority in the media, right? that we, I guess, have a disagreement because I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. I understand that, but these are your own rules on your own platform. This, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you, had, if you said, listen, we allow everything, but that's not what your content rules say. And that's why I'm asking you, why no. are they still there? The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because... This is the reason he's asking. Sure, that doesn't sound made up at all. Now that he lost the battle about legal versus illegal, anything to try and save face, emphasis on try. I'm wondering, which specific content policies does Lemon have in mind? Surely he can't make this claim without being specific, can he? Part of our content policy says that we, have, we, we, we should delete these, these, these things. Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech. The exact term that Lemon still hasn't defined. I'm gonna need something more specific than that. The, you, you can think of X as being, it's much like the internet. It's not 
some t- some tiny publication with like 20 articles a day. It's 500 yeah, million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity to read a D-Log. Again, his statements presuppose a rock-solid presupposition about which content will lead to which outcome, which, when considering the different approaches to understanding how people perceive media texts such as movies, computer games, and podcasts, isn't this deliberately oversimplified? But everyone has the opportunity okay. to read a D-Log. Lemon mentions Musk's first name as a way of trying to establish hierarchy. Again, emphasis on trying. So and they, they, they you don't have the opportunity, opportunity to read the internet. Are you said suggesting we should shut down the internet? No, but but you don't own the internet. I'm asking you about you and your responsibility and your platform. And I, I so I see how you feel now. You don't agree. We don't agree on this. I saw how Musk felt at least four minutes ago. But way to make it look like it's because of the complexity of the questions that Musk is looking slightly frustrated. An old tactic from old media. Also, Musk just said that they didn't agree, so that's not a surprise at this point. Thus, Lemon's revealing that he's saying this to have the last word. So I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. Yes, you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at yes, all. Yes, you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there is, I think there... You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship... You want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. Really? And in this postmodern world, how does he so easily define what's right and wrong? Whose truth are we talking about? Who's the arbiter of what's right and wrong? Who should be allowed to influence future generations on social media? This pediatrician. And how I put it in words for kids so that they can understand it is, tell me your story. Where have you been in terms of your gender and your gender identity? Where are you right now? So medical affirmation begins when the patient says they're ready for it. So that could be a, a kiddo who is just starting puberty. I Lemon's intonation that implies right that Musk doesn't think that that's right and wrong. Lemon constantly takes the moral high ground. And, and, I think that, and, I, and I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours, and you are a person who, of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world. And I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Oh, so he didn't see that they disagreed after all. I, so I see how you feel now. You don't agree. We don't agree on this. It's almost as if he just said that to have the last word and is now repeating the same speech with the same presuppositions over and over again. Um, I think the, we, we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law. Um, and if people want the law changed, they should Talk to, the elector, talk to their elected representative and get the law changed, and then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is, that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has no meaning. But I, I do think that there, are, there should be guardrails. And I believe in free speech as much as you. I would fight. I don't, I don't disagree. I don't agree with um, a lot of what you put out on social media, but I will fight for your right to be able to say it. Yes, that sounds totally reliable, especially after he's just finished saying which content should be removed and that Musk does no right from wrong the same way he does. Lemon's statement sounds particularly unreliable because what he says is a paraphrase of the expression, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it, making his claim as impersonal as it gets. That's it for now, see you next time.